are we on the stream? There we go. All right. All right. Welcome everybody to Crystal Friday. Uh, I think this is the third or no, maybe even the fourth that we've done. Um, so if you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome. Um, this is a stream where um, I go through and I work on a project in the Crystal programming language. And uh, I've been working on the same project since the very beginning of this. Um, and we kind of do one task at a time. So uh, the project is here at github slash ar slash slash uh, That's a handful. So um, it is always in the recordings, which are on YouTube. Um, and you can access those recordings um, uh, from a lot of different places. Um, but basically, you usually can search Crystal Fridays, Aaron Schlesinger, and uh, you can see those. Uh, also, they're in the, um, I think they're in my Twitch profile too. So you can look in, in there or a lot of other places and, and find it. Um, so uh, just a little overview on CProx. Um, it's uh, one of my favorite sort of projects to start up when I'm learning a language. Um, it's a URL shortener um, and a URL forwarder. So kind of like if you're familiar with like tiny URL or bit.ly, um, it's that kind of thing, but way more basic. Um, the reason I do this is because I have to learn how to do HTTP um, and write a server. And I also have to learn how to do stuff on the back end with a database. Um, so this thing has three main REST APIs. Um, this slash code and this slash code, those are for adding and deleting uh, URL codes from the backend database. And then there's one for actually forwarding on to um, the URL that the code is, um, the URL that the code is shortening. Yeah, I think I said that right. Um, so those are the three things. Last week, uh, actually two weeks ago and last week, we uh, built a dashboard. Um, so the dashboard, uh, let me just start the process up and I'll show you what the dashboard looks like. Da -da -da. And we're going to open it up here. Let me refresh the page. So the dashboard is really, really basic. Um, uh, these are my super awesome HTML skills. Um, but basically, if we open it up, we can see uh, it's, I think I have bootstrap in here. Yeah, I have bootstrap in here. And then it's just basically uh, a form that goes to this slash add URL endpoint. And I'll show that in a second. Um, the add URL endpoint is a post endpoint that basically does the exact same thing as this. It's just that this is a, a REST API that's JSON based and the slash add URL, which I'll go to here. That would be in this or CProx. Scroll down, we've got our add URL. And the add URL pretty much uh, is copied and pasted code uh, from the post. And I actually think that I broke some of it out maybe. Um, maybe not, I actually can't remember. Um, but anyway, it's fairly simple. Uh, we're basically saying did we get the URL and code from the post body? Uh, and if we did not, then we bail. And if we did, then we do our thing. Um, we just get the URL and the code and then shove it into our database. Um, and that's the last part. This database is a database called Kamal. Um, so if I just go into the dependencies real quick, Kamal, you can go to K-E-M-A-L-C-R.com. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Kamal is the server, and then Numite is uh, the database. So it's GitHub slash CodeStake. I love that name. GitHub slash CodeStake slash Numite with two U's and two M's. Um, that is the database that I'm using. And the database is super easy to use. It basically looks like a hash map uh, it's just that the database implements the underlying hash map as an on-disk database. Super cool. 
I really, really enjoy using this. And it also kind of is a microcosm of uh, the bigger picture of like the simplicity and elegance of crystal. So anyway, enough of my blabbing. Um, actually, a little more of my blabbing. I wanted to mention uh, a new development environment I'm using. Uh, it's called Visual Studio Online. So um, let me just go to the... Visual Studio Online thingy. Um, it's at online.visualstudio.com. It just literally yesterday, I think, yesterday. Don't hold me to that. I'm pretty sure it's yesterday. Uh, it got renamed to Visual Studio Code Spaces, but it's the same idea. Um, everything I'm doing is um, editing the code on my local VS Code, but the code is stored on a server somewhere and um, I'm running it all on a server and I'm running a website, um, a web app, and you'll notice I'm at localhost port 3000, so it's forwarding the port, um, which is pretty nice. All my compile times are pretty low, all my tests go pretty fast because uh, it's not running on my machine, it's running on a VM in the cloud that's um, dedicated only to this project, basically. So. All right, now, without further ado, um, I will start getting to the code. So I've got my chat up. If you've got comments, questions, if you see me doing something stupid, um, just feel free to just write it down in the chat. Um, I kind of look over to it um, pretty regularly, and um, I would love to hear from you, especially if you are telling me that I did something wrong. So um, I'm a newbie to Crystal, and I know there are Sometimes folks on here that are not, and I would love to hear your feedback. Same thing if you have questions. I'll try my best to answer them. So, today, I'm trying to bite off more than I can chew today. Um, so, what I want to do is add searching. I want to add a REST API for searching. Um, and that is a get endpoint. And I want to pass, I actually wrote key, but that's wrong. I want to pass the code into the um, URL parameter. And I want it to go through the database, search for that code, and then return the URL in the response body if that code is there. And otherwise do a 404. So I also want to write tests for it. And I also want to make it accessible in the dashboard. So if I can, I think if I can get this built, then I'll be pretty happy today. If I can get it built and tested, I'll be super happy today. If I can get it built and tested and added to the front page dashboard, we're going to have a party. We're going to get cake. We're going to get cupcakes. We're going to get hats and streamers, and, and we're going to have a party because uh, that would be super cool. So... Uh, let's do it. Let's get started on the endpoint. So I'm going to copy this and put it into my uh, my uh, crystal file, cprox.cr. Let's go here. And I just want to point out once again, I, I always point this out, but I copied from my issue this. Now, like, look how little I have to do to make it crystal code. Like, I just, that still blows me away. I'm not even, like, selling Crystal. I am a third party just liking Crystal uh, here. Um, so, like, I just lowercase this and put quotes around the rest of it. Um, so, so, I'm just happy about that. That's all. I'm geeking out on Crystal. I've been geeking out on Crystal for uh, months now. Um, so, we have our get endpoint. We're doing nothing right now. Um but basically now I want to search through the database. So I'm pretty sure last week uh, I wrote this get KVPs function. So I'm going to go into here. And basically what's going on here is this is going through the database. Uh, and it's just adding every key value pair to an array. Let me indent that. It's adding every key value pair in the database to this array of string string tuples. Uh, and then it's returning it. So I am sure I can be way more efficient in searching, um, but I'm just gonna start with get KVPs and then I'll search through the array that it gives back 
see if I can find the code. And if I can find the code, then we're just going to go ahead and return it. So um, uh, let's do this key. Uh, basically, just going to copy this code to get the array in the first place. Key value pairs equals that. And we got to get the code out. And I forgot how to do that. Um, yeah, we do this. So we get the code out. I'll do that up here in case it's missing. And then we're going to check for the code. Um, return URL code was missing. And actually, uh, before I go on, I actually don't know in Kamal how to return a code and then a response body that talks about the error. So I'm going to go to the Kamal website here and I'm going to figure that out. Uh, da -da, guide. Um, let's search for error code. Da -da -da, error 404. Error 403. I do not really want that because it's an error handler. Browser redirect. Da -da -da, filters. I think maybe it's farther up. Da -da -da, maybe I can do this. Status code. I'll bet there's a way that's easier than this. I could do response.headers.add, um, but I don't think that's the right way to do it. Um, maybe cookbook. Let's see. Hello world recipe. Reuse port. Oh, web sockets. Maybe we'll do that sometime in the future. That looks shiny and cool. Um, is this do anything? No. Let's go back to the guide. Halt, halt execution with the current context. That looks good. Let's try that. Looks like we can pass the environment, the status code, and then the actual response body. So that looks great. Let's do that. So we're gonna pass in the environment. Status code is gonna be uh, 40, I think it's 400, bad request. Let's see. HTTP status code, good old Wikipedia, uh, client errors, yeah, 400 bad requests. It's uh, good and also scary that I remember these things. Um, so but bad request, and then I'm just gonna put the URL code was missing into the response body, and we're golden. All right, so we're gonna do else, then we're gonna get a key value pairs, and I'm just gonna keep keep saying this probably every stream for a while till I start taking it for granted. Um, I really love how code or how um, Crystal handles like optional params or maybes. Uh, so this is saying, this question mark is saying, hey, the code might be there or it might not. So this code is actually going to be a string. Ooh, I can't type string or nil. So what that means is I got to figure out, is this string or is it nil? So that crystal will make me do that. So this is how I see, is it nil? And if it's nil, then the code won't even be available inside of the if here. But when I go down here, the code will be guaranteed to not be nil and it will be a string. So I'm pretty, I'm always pretty pumped about that. And we're going to now look through the code. So key value pairs is this array of tuple string string. And I have to go through the array and search the first element of the tuple, since that would be the code. And if I find the code in one of the first elements of one of the tuples in the array, I got to immediately return the second one. So let's go and check out the crystal API docs for array. And I can never remember how to get to them. Not that, um, where is it? Language reference. No, that's not it either. Uh, type system API. Nope. Um, let's just do this. Oh. Is it this? 
Yes. A little hard to get to. Uh, well, it's sort of. It's okay. You got to remember to click this. And then we're going to go to language reference. Nope. API docs. There it is. And we're going to search for array. And again, like this isn't really the best way to go. I probably should somehow get the database into a hash map. Um, wait a second. That This is totally wrong. Why am I even doing this? So the database already is a hash map that maps from codes to URLs. Wow, that's funny. I totally forgot about this. So we should be able to do this, db and then code. Boom, so we don't have to do any of this. Wow, and this is even more efficient too. So uh, this goes to show how I should have thought this through before I started writing code but I was just so excited to write code. So that'll happen. So we've got our URL and the URL again, it's a maybe. So this is a string nil and we got to check. So is the URL nil, then halt environment status code. And then this is going to be a 404 because that means that there is no URL for the code you passed. And that is the part that I actually did think through, thankfully. So it's return a URL, uh, return a 404 if the key isn't in the database. So that would be this, key isn't in the database. And then otherwise, this way uh, we can just return a string um, because when we return a string, then Kamal automatically assumes it's a 200, which is what we want. So. I'm just going to go and return the string and just leave it at that. Yeah. So let's go test this out. Let's run the thing. All righty. So we've got an error. Um, crystal of uh, CProx line 32. What did we do wrong? That's what we did wrong. We've got to pass in the environment to our block. So the way that I think about blocks, it's not really technically 100% correct, but the way that I think about blocks is that they are like a function, like a closure. Uh, and the, the way to read this is, this is a function that takes in an ENV, an environment, and then it will be run, it will be past the environment and run when someone does a get request against this URL. So it's more like a callback, like a callback function, because the underlying Kamal system will automatically call me this thing, um, and it will pass the environment, like the context, for that specific request when it comes in. <clears throat> so I forgot to define like, hey, this is a function that takes in the environment um, it's not a function that just takes nothing. In. <clears throat> so we're going to do that and looks like we're better off. Yeah. And we've got it running on 3000. So let's go over to 3000 again. And I think we listed a catalog somewhere. Did we do a catalog? Looks like we did not do a catalog. So. We're gonna do that. I'll open up another uh, another console, and let's see what the params are. So we've got actually we can look on the cprox docs. So we're gonna do the post. We pass in the code, and then we do some JSON with the URL in it. So open up another terminal. Let's make this big. So we're gonna do a curl to localhost 3000. We're gonna make it a post, and then we're gonna do um, some JSON. We're gonna pass in the URL. Twitch.tv slash AR slash, that's me. And then we're gonna close down the JSON. And I always mess this up. I should really create a like a command line for this. Um, 
like a, a little CLI to control CPROX. Uh, oh, because I did the wrong endpoint. So this should be a post slash code and then the code after that. So let's go back down, clear it out, then slash code slash one, two, three. There we go. So now we know we have a code one, two, three in there. And now let's do a search. Uh, curl localhost 3000 search one, two, three. Boom, there it is. Let's test it out. Nothing here. We're gonna see if it's a 404. We gotta do a uh, verbose. 404, there we go. There's one thing here I noticed that the response body did not come back. See content length, content length zero. So let's figure out why, 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 why. Uh, going back to the Kamal docs, returns 200 and an empty response by default. Helpers, browser redirect, no. Logging, no. Actually, let's go, maybe we can learn something from the Kamal logs. 404, no, it doesn't really have much logging in there. Maybe there's a way to turn that up. Oops, I do not want Spotify to run. Not today, Spotify. Ta I think this is probably the basics. Filters, common paths. Da -da -da. This one is interesting. I didn't know about this. You can make another macro. Uh, these these ones are macros. It's code that generates code at compile time. You can create another macro that you can call inside the macro that does stuff, whatever you need to do. So I digress, but that's interesting to me. Um, no, this is templates. This is template layouts. No, no, no. Static files don't need that routes okay that's this is getting more and more basic obviously i'm scrolling up so that's not really what we need i might have to go digging to figure out how to do response bodies env redirect halt did i actually do it right yeah i did halt status code 400 Let's see what happens if we haul, or if we do a no post body. Uh, I'm sorry, if we do a code that, oh, what did I do? This is all wrong. Oh, <laughs> there, okay. Search. If there was no code, then the response should be URL code was missing. This is what happens when I don't pay attention what route I'm actually looking at. So, okay. If the URL code was missing, I should see this response body. So we're going to do our curl localhost 3000 um, search and then no code at all. So that actually could never happen. The router is gonna actually prevent that from happening. So we can't really test out, yeah, we can't really test out that case because Kamal will actually prevent it. So it's kind of weird because we've got to like protect against the case, but we know that that case could never happen. So there's pros and cons to the, you know, crystal requirements for testing out these maybe types. Um, but I'd rather do a little bit more code personally. I'd rather do a little bit more code to, um, to handle, you know, all the possible cases, especially if they're cases that can crash my app. Um, I'd rather do that than, you know, write less code, uh, only a few lines, less code, and then open up my app to maybe breaking down the line. So we can't really test this out. And this, this is why I didn't even put a response code in here. Duh. So response code not found. All right, let's rerun it and try this again. Da 
it's compiling 3000 so nothing here there we go all right one more thing i'm going to try to put the code into the string i don't remember how to do this but there is a way for crystal to do like template strings um meaning like i should be able to do something like this uh like code you know code not found so i'm gonna look that up um is it in the it might be in the language reference yeah interpolation it allows you to embed expressions which will be expanded at runtime so yeah it looks like hash and then surround the variable with uh, squiggly braces so hash code not found and just because i am a stickler for making sure the lines aren't too long i am going to put these arguments on separate lines just because and we're going to go back to our thing here run it oh boy i never remember how to do this maybe we're not going to be such a stickler right now because this is just a small detail I never remember how to do new lines for function calls, how to handle new lines for function calls. So I'm just not going to do that right now. Let's let it build. Maximize the terminal. Code, nothing here, not found. Sweet. And I'm just curious, this is not related to Crystal, but I'm pretty sure Curl, yes, Curl will do it right. All right. So we did the thing. We have the search endpoint. So what's next? Uh, where is my issue? What is next? Okay, so I want it to be tested. I didn't even write that in here, but I want to go forward with this project and make sure there's test coverage for pretty much everything. Um, so. This is something we haven't done yet. We haven't figured out how to actually test the HTTP endpoint itself. So I am gonna start by looking in the Kamal documentation to figure out if there's a way to like write a spec, a crystal spec um, that automatically gets like injected with a running server um, or maybe not a running server, but it gets injected with something that lets me like do a fake get request against this code. Uh, so I can see like, does it return the 404? Does it return the 400 or, or what have you? So let's go into those Kemal documentation. And I'm just gonna start with this. Test, I don't wanna test with curl. Kemal session, default storage is memory. You should only use memory for development and testing. Noted. Hey, testing. Okay. Okay. Got to install the shard. We already have this, so I just add this. Um, let's do that first. We'll put it right next to the Kamal thing. And before I go further, I'm going to install the shards, the new shard. Cool. So require it in your spec helper before your files. Okay, let's go to the spec helper. Maybe I don't need to do that because I don't have anything in my spec helper. I remember I didn't need to do this. Uh, well, actually, it looks like we do need to do this now because that's my Kamal app. Kamal env equals test, and then you run crystal spec. Okay, let's try it because maybe Kamal env equals test will, will make it not actually run and hang forever. Because I remember when we did this and we ran the tests, it just hung there forever. And the reason for that was this all the way down here. It would just run 
it would just run forever. But this looks like, yeah, address already in use. So it really is trying to actually run it. So let's see, we'll do that. We're going to run the thing with Kamal env equals test. And this, yeah, okay. So it looks like this thing will figure out some way to run the actual server and then run our tests maybe in a separate thread or something. And that will free up our tests, A, to actually run because they're not just gonna be waiting on Kamal um, to, to stop running, even though it will never stop running. But also the test will be able to interact with Kamal. So that's pretty cool too. So we now have something like this from our spec helper because we're importing our cprox. Yep, cprox. And we gotta require the spec Kamal thing above it. So let's just do it right below spec, but right above our file. And your Kamal application looks like that. We run that. So let's let's go ahead and run this again. That's not where I wanted to do it. And here, and da, 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 it looks like it's working. Cool. So we ran it with Kamal env equals test. Then we added this require in right here. We ran it again. It still works. So that's a good sign. Kind of going a little step by step here. And let's open a new spec file. We're going to just call it um, test. Uh, we're going to call it uh, actually cprox search spec.cr. I remember that specs always need to end with underscore spec. Um, and then we're going to just do one of these, copy this in to get started. And we're going to do a describe what? Describe, let's describe search. And we're gonna do it um, returns the right URL. So this is going to be, the very first thing is going to be put in a code for the URL and then try to search for that code to get it back out. So um, we are going to do db dot, or db, let's first do this, code equals my test code and then db, uh, we're going to do url equals twitch. And we're going to do db code equals url. And then we're going to do our requests. We're just going to do our get. Get uh, search. What was it again? Let's close some of these files down. Where are we at? So get slash search and then the code. And then response dot body should equal the URL. So that's one spec. Let's try running the spec first. Undefined local variable or method DB. I think that's because we didn't require cprox in that file. So let's do that. Require SRC CProx. Is that how we do it? Let's see how spec helper. Yeah, SRC CProx. Let's see if it works. Okay. Um, oh, wait. I think I've run into this before. Do I have to do a I think maybe I have to do like a cprox dot or a cprox colon colon maybe. Try that. I never remember how to do these imports. Expecting const, no, oops. That's not how I do it. And I always flail around like this, but we'll figure something out. Undefined method db for cprox module. Um, where is the db at? Yeah, so it should be under module cprox. 
So I have to go again and read about modules. Uh, reference modules. Okay, curses, colon, colon, window, items.new, include, no, no, no. Oh, maybe we need to do an include. Let's see about that. Is that what we do? Yeah, we can include a module. Well, we can include a module under a class, so maybe we can include one under a spec. We'll see. Can't include dynamically, okay. Let's keep going and see what we can do. Include some module. So maybe we've got to do our require and then we can do include cprox up here at the top. Maybe it was saying dynamically because when it was when it was included underneath, oh boy, when it was included underneath the describe, that was going to do an include after it ran the spec. So let's see. No, I don't want that. And that's what I want. Nope. It's including there, and then it can access some type. Extend cell. I don't want to do that. Interesting. Wow. Well. I might be out of ideas here. Line nine, we're trying to access this database. Let's see if there's an example for accessing a variable. So this is accessing a class and we are accessing, um, this is accessing a method inside of a module, same deal here. Both include and extend make constants defined in the module available to the including and extending type. Where did we see extend? Extend, let's try extend. Once I figure it out here, I will never forget it. Extend self. Maybe, maybe I need to put my test in a, the same module. Let's try that. Let's try it without the formatting for now. Nope. Huh. Well, let's do something a little bit different for now, just to get something working. Let's see if we can put the database outside of the module and then maybe it'll work there. Obviously, this is not the best solution. Wow, even that doesn't work, huh? Another idea is to put it in a separate file. Let's try that. db.cr. We're going to put that over here. And we need to import Numite. And then we need to require db and let's see if this works so I'm hoping that we can also do require db in here and it's going to be src db I'm hoping we can do that here and then cprox and the spec can both access it on the other hand this could completely blow up yes it will yes it did 
Interesting. So I wonder if we need to do a class. Maybe we need to do a class. There we go. Okay. So we're going to do a module C prox. And in the class, we're going to do a class level so that it's pretty much global. And then here we should be able to do the same thing. And then we do our DB, uh, we can do this down here. DB is kind of the class and then the class variable is DB. So actually, wait a second. Classes and methods, da, da, da. class variables. So we do this. And yeah, then we can do counter dot. So we can do db dot db, uh, the uppercase db dot db. Same deal here. So uh, this might be going way off base, but let's see. Still undefined method db for db dot class. We don't want the method. Let's try that. So this error was on line 10 of CProx. Let's see. Interesting. Maybe it says it wants a method. So let's try the method. So we're going to do a db equals new db. Uh, it's actually db.new db. And then db equals db instance dot database. Is it called database? Get db. This is very convoluted, but oh, I don't think we need to do the do. All right, well, we fixed it in CProx, so let's fix it over here. So db.new.getdb. And then db code equals URL. And maybe that syntax here might be wrong, but we're going to try it anyway. Well, didn't fail the compilation. That's good. Okay. Okay. Super convoluted. Maybe we can do better. But let's instead focus more on some one more test at least. It turns 404 uh, when code doesn't exist. Do and then we're going to do db equals db.new.getdb. And actually, we don't even need to do that. We're going to do get search no exist. And then response.code. Uh, is it code? I need to look back at Kamal. Um, duh, duh, duh. Well, it doesn't say if it's code, if it's like response.code. So I'm going to say response.code uh, should equal 404 and I'm just going to guess that that's what it is and we shall see that's an if that should be an it and we got to do a dot should just copying what's above here and this 
there is no dot code so oh this is an HTTP client response so that's in the standard library so my standard library is here I'm gonna search for response client response and somewhere in here is the code status underscore code almost there okay for examples so this there's two in here I'm just gonna make sure that it ran all the tests actually ran all the tests so there's two in here one so there's one here and one here so it ran everything let's just double check though that it actually is running this properly and let's put it to a code that we know it should not be and make sure the test fails in here cool it fails what is it well how does the failure look uh, let's make this bigger failures cool expected 400 got 404 makes it nice nice and easy to read change it back I'm gonna commit my work I forgot to do that last time so I'll add search endpoint and a test for it all right and a little bit of formatting going on here that I don't like do one of those um okay so what's next we've we've done pretty good i've got about 10 more minutes so let's see if we can do some dashboard stuff so our dashboard is in views this is it and we've got a form to add a new url so let's also do a form to search i'm just going to copy this let me copy both search for a URL we need a new endpoint for search so it's going to be a search form let's say I don't know and then we're going to do our get so this is basically going to be a, a uh, HTML friendly endpoint for um, yeah, HTML friendly endpoint that kind of fronts the new API that we just wrote. So I'm going to copy some of this boilerplate HTML. Probably only need the URL code part. Cool, cool. Um, Got to do some indentation. And we need the button as well. I'm going to just call it search. And we're going to close our form. Looks like I got everything right, hopefully. Yeah, okay. Uh, we got to de indent this. And first things first, let's make sure that our thing actually will run still. And this is just going to be at the front page. So I want to see if the form is actually there. Forms there. And then if I put something in A, B, C, D, it, this should fail. Yeah. So search form, the, the search form uh, route doesn't exist. Um, so let us do the search form route next time. Yeah. So we have a pretty good idea of how to do it. If we go into our um, da, 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 cprox.cr, we have a pretty good idea how to do that. We're, we'll just put it here. So get search, oops, search form do env, and then we'll just do like uh, to do get URL code from query string, and then look it up and return it something like that and we got to figure out like are we going to return it into the same template or are we going to return a different page and uh 
we'll go over that design next time because honestly i have no idea so we'll have to think that think that through so for this time that'll be it um if you uh tuned in late this will be on youtube um the youtube link is on my website uh, airschless.com uh, just click on the Crystal Fridays link and you can see down at the bottom, there's a link to the YouTube playlist. Um, I'll put it into the Twitch uh, description as well if I can figure out how to do that. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'll figure it out though. So yeah, that'll be it for today. Um, I really hope you go check out Crystal just if it's only for a little bit. Uh, pretty nice and slick language. And you can even go here and spin the crystal ball if you want. I just noticed that. Uh, it's kind of kind of cool. So yeah, go go check it out. Um, installing is pretty easy. I literally installed it about four minutes before I started um, this screencast or this uh, stream. Sorry. Um, so I installed it just before I started the stream. Um, it's a self-contained everything, so you don't have to install like a runtime and all the libraries and stuff. It's all inside of one binary. Um, and I hope you can kind of see the language is, you know, fairly straightforward, uh, really easy to understand if you know Ruby. Um, so yeah, go check it out, give it a go. Um, I think it's a pretty slick and up and coming language, uh, and I'm really excited about it. So yeah, for that, I'll say goodbye. Um, just want to wish everyone good health, have a good weekend, make sure you stay safe, make sure you wash your hands. Um, and I will see you next week at the same time and the same place. So 10 a.m. Pacific time and uh, on twitch.tv slash AR uh, And I'll tweet out and blog out um, before I uh, do that stream. All right, everybody, take care. Have a good one. And I'll talk to you later.